As a teacher, instructional designer, or e-learning developer, we're always looking for ways to visually enhance our learning content with images and videos. So how do we go from something very boring like this plain text to something rich and interesting like this that has images, that those images have layout, that they can even have text over the top if you wish? You might want to crop an image to fit a certain size or orientation and also enrich your learning content with YouTube videos. Along the way, how do you do that in a way that meets our legal obligations? And there are two of them, really important ones. The first is about copyright, to ensure that your images first come from free and open license sites and that you give proper attribution back to the license holder. In this case, it's a wonderful website called Unsplash. And I'll just very quickly show you their license as a way of example. This license allows us to use their images for free for commercial and non-commercial purposes, no permission is needed, that attribution is appreciated. Now, in the Australian educational context, attribution is required. And so this tool helps us to meet that legal obligation. It does another important thing, which is to bring across what is called alternative text that will assist a, a person who might be non-cited by describing the contents of that image. And Importantly, we also want to make sure that our content works on all devices, whether a student is on their mobile phone or on a large format computer as I am. And the tool that I'm about to introduce you to will do just that. So regardless of whether you're on a small format device or a big wide screen as I have, the images and the video will resize to fit the available space. So how do we get to that? This is where uh, my tool called the Image Embedder and Attribution Maker kicks in. Let me introduce you to it. It's a tool that you can add to your web browser. And when you have done so, you can use it with any of the chosen sites here. I'll explain these more in just a sec. So let me quickly show you how to add it to your browser and then I'll show you how it works. The first thing to note is that I have, I'm in the Chrome browser. I happen to be on a Mac, but that should not matter. Um, and I've got the what's called the bookmarks toolbar displayed here. It lives just below the URL bar. If you don't have that available or displayed on your own uh, browser, go to the three uh, dots on the right hand side, go down to bookmarks and there'll be an option. It's slightly off the screen for you, which says show bookmarks bar. Once you have that, you'll have a bar like this displayed. I've got lots of things added to my bar, but uh, when you visit the website and the link I will include with this video, you get this first time instructions. And the really important thing is to grab and hold this Attribution Maker Plus link. So I have my mouse still down and I'm dragging it up until my mouse is over the bookmarks bar. And you'll now notice there's a plus symbol. And if I let go now, it's placed that Attribution Maker in my browser. And that's the setup done. There's no more to do. It's now off to explore and to find some really great images. So let's get started. Maybe I'll take you first to, to Pexels. Pexels has got some fabulous images. All you need to do is to search. It also has an open license. The images are free to use. And all I need to do is to choose an image I like the look of. Perhaps it's this one here. I click on that so that image is full screen. And then I click on my Attribution Maker Plus tool. And what it will do is it'll take that chosen image and display it for you back on screen with a range of different layer options for you to decide how you might want this to look in your learning content. First thing to note is it works with a number of learning management systems, including uh, Moodle, which is, uses a thing called Bootstrap, and Canvas, and probably others as well. It also, by the way, happens to work with non-LMS tools, like just plain old Word. So right down the bottom, there's this option to copy into Word and PowerPoint. I'll show you that later in the session. But for now, let's look at how we can get this image into Moodle in a particular layout. So the first thing I need to do is to choose my layout. Maybe I like this floated to the right. That seems like a good choice for me. Uh, I might want it to be perhaps a little bit larger. If I choose 50%, for instance, that's 50% or half of the available space. I can decide whether I want the attribution to be hidden in the way that it is here or visible all the time. 
Both work, both meet legal obligations. My preference is for collapse because I just think it's a bit more subtle. You choose what, what suits you and your organization. And then I'm going to press two buttons. I'm going to press the copy embed code and I'm going to choose the download small image. I'll explain the purpose of both of those buttons as we follow the next steps. So now it's back to the LMS, back to Moodle. Here I am. I might go back to my boring content and see if I can make it a little less boring. So I'm going to turn editing on and go to the editor for this page. So for those familiar with, with Moodle, this is the Atto editor. You can, of course, type text into here. But the thing that we copied a moment ago wasn't just normal plain text. It was a thing called embed code or HTML. And in order to paste that into your learning content, you need to just momentarily leave this pretty view for the HTML view. You do that by clicking on this icon. This will show you what a web page actually looks like to the computers. You don't need to read or understand any of what you're seeing here. All you need to do is position your cursor where you want the image to be. And for me, I want this to be right at the very tippy top. So I just put the cursor before anything else and I'll paste Control V or Command V, depending on whether you're a Windows or a Mac. When I come back to the HTML view, that image is there and it works. Let me just save this and I'll show you. So in a matter of moments, really, I've chosen an image and I've integrated it into my learning content. Now, there's a few things to note. So first of all, you can see that the attribution statements are there and it lists, for instance, a link directly to this photo, who took the photo, what side it was from, the fact that it has a free to use license. It also lists the date that you added it to your learning content. It's curious to note that this image actually at the moment lives elsewhere on the internet, it actually lives on the Pexels website. That's entirely fine. It's perfectly legal to do that. There is a very, very slight risk that if the original author of this image were to take that image off of Pexels, then potentially this image could become broken. So there's a second and optional step that if you wanted to, you can protect against that happening. Let me take you through it just to um, show you how easy that second step is. All I need to do is back into the editor and double click on the image. And this is where you might notice that that image doesn't actually live here, it lives somewhere else. It's also, by the way, got uh, already what's called the alternative text. So this is my point from earlier on. Text that can be read aloud to someone who might be non-sighted or use other assistive technologies to help them navigate the page that describes the contents of that image. So that's already there for you. You, of course, can adjust that text should you need to. But what I want to do in this moment is just to replace this image, which is currently out on the internet, with the same image, just uploaded into Moodle. So I just go into the edit, upload files, choose a file, and I'm choosing the, the image that I had downloaded moments earlier when I clicked that download button back in the Attribution Maker. Well, the important thing to note is the image that is downloaded is actually of a very small file size because this tool not only does it help you lay out the images, but it also will convert and, and format those images to be the smallest size possible to fit that available space. The original image might have been 20, maybe even 50 times larger than this. And so the implication there is you can get 20 or 50 times as many images in for the same file size. And it doesn't look any different. So, okay, I'm going to choose that I'm going to upload this image into Moodle. It won't look any different, it's exactly the same. The only thing now is that image happens to live inside the Moodle file system. So if the original image was to be taken off the internet, it would still work. Optional, but a good safeguard. I tend to do that second step uh, fairly regularly. Okay, we've done one image. I'll do one more just to show you how easy it is. I'll go back to my Attribution Maker tool just so that you can see that again. Um, and introduce you to some of these other image sorts. This one here, I think, is particularly useful. Uh, Wikimedia Commons, if you've never met it before, Wikimedia Commons is basically the, where all the images of Wikipedia live, all the images in the media and a whole lot of resources, all shared under Creative Commons free use licenses. Uh, but if you're looking for really specific images, which you can't find anywhere else, very likely you'll find them in Wikimedia Commons. Let me show you. This is great Australian animal called an Antichinus. Uh, but let's just make sure I spell it right. Here we are. 
And so if I was looking for a really specific image, this is a lovely marsupial mouse, basically, um, well, here I am. I wouldn't have found this anywhere else, I don't reckon. And actually, there's some lovely images here. So maybe I want this image. Um, all I need to do is to click on it so that it's also full screen, the same way that I did when I was choosing a pixels image. There it is there. And press on my Attribution Maker tool again. So happy days. Now we've got this image there. Again, we can choose different layout options. Maybe this time, because it's such a lovely image. I might want this full screen, thank you. So I just go down and choose the, the full screen version. And again, I can hit the download. I'll move a little bit quicker just to show you how to add that in. You've seen me add one. Let's. I'm just going to repeat the same steps to add the second. I'm going to go back into the HTML code. This time I might want it a bit lower down, maybe here. Paste that in. And when I'm back in the code, um, there's that second image. And then, of course, I could do that optional step of re-uploading that into to Moodle. But you know how to do that now. There's another um, string to this bow. And a really useful feature that the Attribution Maker now does as well, which is to do the same thing, but for YouTube videos. So let's go through that. So again, here is the tool. And one of the supported sites you'll see is YouTube. So I can go off to YouTube and I can search for an interesting video. Maybe it's this one. And if I want to integrate this video into my learning content, I simply hit on the Attribution Maker again. So it will work out now that we're dealing not with an image, but but a YouTube video. And it displays that YouTube video here. And there's also an attribution back to who authored it and where it's from, etc., etc. So that's all great. Well, a couple of other things it's done. You'll notice it's got the title of the vi video. It's got the playtime of that video. It's put it into a little bounding box with a little icon, which is nice. And it's also taken the descriptive text that the original video author has put in. So this is really useful because I always like to give instructions to my students and these words are actually really helpful to me. I, I can basically take their words, maybe edit them slightly if I want to at the other end, but it's basically ready for me. If I didn't want that um, YouTube description, I can turn it off. So you've got that option. I'm going to choose to keep it. There's also an option here, should you want to, to adjust when this starts and ends. So rather than playing the full 4 minute and 41 video, for instance, there might just be perhaps a two minute sequence in the middle that you want to kind of lift up. So the way that that would work, and again, this is entirely optional at this point, is all I need to do is to play the video to the point that I want it to start. Maybe it's maybe there. And if I press this button to say, make the start time match the current play time, it will put the time that that is, that's 18 seconds basically. So it's gonna start the video 18 seconds into the playback. And all I can do then is maybe sort of scrub forward. Perhaps that's where I want it to end at this point. And I say match the end time now. So it's basically a play from 18 seconds through to 195 seconds, whatever that is in minutes, two minutes and 15, something like that. So that's basically ready for me now. If I want to adjust this so it's got those new um, start and end times. I just simply click the update embed code with start and end times. And you'll see immediately it's doing what it should have done. It jumps immediately to the 18 second mark and it will now play to the 195 second mark. And I, so I've got it all configured. And by the way, and this is interesting because we've only taken a smaller uh, time sequence now, it's automatically adjusted the play time. So it was four minutes and 41. But because of our chosen start and end times, we've got that down to two minutes and 57. So that's useful for you to think about because as you're selecting videos, very often there's some advertising at the front or at the end. If you trim that off, not only is it it's shorter for your students, but there's a less annoying, I guess. So anyway, um, that's all kind of ready for me now. I hit the copy in YouTube embed, which I do there. I jump over into my Moodle editor and I paste it in entirely the same way. I go into the HTML view, I scroll down to the very bottom and paste. And now in a matter of however long this recording is, we have gone from boring content to interesting content. Let me just save this so that you can kind of see it in its full glory. Give me a moment. 
That content has images. Those images have attribution. They have alternative text. They have layout and design. We've also included a video. We cropped that video to, so that it's not 4 minutes and 45, but it's 2 minutes and 57. That video has a description, which we could edit if we want. I can, if I play this video now, it will jump straight to, in this case, the 18 second mark to start that playback. So uh, it, if you do this and you do this often, you can enrich a page in a quarter of the time it's taken me to step you through it, just because it takes longer to give instructions. The other thing just to close out on is not everyone is looking to develop their learning content into Moodle or into Canvas or into another learning management system. They might simply be wanting to decorate up their Word documents or their PowerPoint files. This does that as well. So let me show you that and I'll close out on this example. So again, oh, we'll might as well use this one. Here's, here's a chosen image. I've got an image and I've got it selected. If I scroll this screen right down to the very bottom, by the way, there are options here to, for instance, crop images, etc. but you can play with those in your own time. If I scroll to the very last option, rich touch format, Word and PowerPoint, etc., this will allow me to copy both the image and its attribution in one fell quick, copy, and then if I open up a new Word document and I paste, there is the image, and I just need to resize this a little bit so you can see it all, and it's attribution directly below it. Or I could do that into PowerPoint. I'll just bring up PowerPoint. So here's a new PowerPoint. I can paste into that. The other thing to note is that PowerPoint's got these curious and interesting layout options. So once I pasted that in, I can decide how I might want it to look. So for instance, maybe I want something like this. It's rather nice. So I click onto that, and it sort of does its thing. The, the image attribution is here. It's, it's um, a little hard to see because it's behind, the image is sitting over the top of it. You can adjust that if you want, change the fonts, add some colors behind it, whatever you like. It's more of the fact that you can now really quickly produce things which meet copyright obligations and hopefully are more attractive and more student friendly than they were beforehand.